Hi, this is Bruno again. Thank you for listening to the songs in my channel. Today, I'm going to listen to Brahms, Symphony Number no. Two in D Major, Op. Number Seventy Three, and William Steinberg conducted, and the Pittsburgh Symphony performed. Also. I'm going to use this vintage tea of John table, and this is Philips AG4116, which is made in West Germany in 1962. And this is a tube turn table. So as you can see, there are vacuum tubes inside this machine. And you listen to the song first, and after the song is over, I'm going to talk about Brahms and his life. So, let's listen to the song first. So I'm going to play the first and second movement.
<clears throat> Thank you for listening to the songs in my channel. This LP vinyl is Brahms Symphony No. 2 in D major, OP No. 73, first and second movement. William Steinberg conducted and the Pittsburgh Symphony performed. This vinyl was released in 1972 on Command Classics label and the com condition of the vinyl is very good in spite of the long period of time. It was played with Philips AG4116 vintage tube turntable made in West Germany in 1962 and still it is working beautifully. And now I want to talk about Brahms life. Johannes Brahms was born in 1833, May 7th, in Hamburg, Germany. His father's name was Johann Jacob Brahms, and her mother's name was Johanna Henrika Christian Brahms. His father was a performer for horn and double bass, and Brahms himself learned how to play violin and cello from his father from even from when he was five years old. And when he was seven years old, he could have a chance to learn how to play the piano from Otto Friedrich Billivart Cosell, who was a very uh, popular performer at the time. Young Brahms showed some great talents about music, and his father wanted to move to America with showing, actually using this genius child Brahms, using him to earn some money, but Brahms' teacher, Cosell, did not agree with that, so it didn't happen. So when Brahms was 10, Brahms was sent to Cosell's master, Eduard Machzen, and from him he learned about how to compose and some more theories about music. Even from when Brahms was 11, he began to compose, but unfortunately, this, this works from his young days could not be reserved. So nothing is left. His family had to kind of financial problems, so Brahms had to stop the school and to help the family financial condition, he had to play the piano in some um, like bar or restaurants or other private performing places. He had to do that. He had to do that. And also he had to do some lessons to earn some money for his family. Sometimes he conducted some choir or he had to do some arrangements of choral music just to earn some money for his family. And this kind of experience helped Brahms to compose his own choral music time a lot of time later. But this kind of experience was helpful for him for the future. Then in 1853, Brahms came to meet Josef Joachim in Hannover, 
and he was a very famous violinist from Hungary, then he could go traveling with him. So in Weimar, he could meet Franz Liszt. And this Joheim wrote a letter to Robert Schumann to introduce Brahms. So Brahms and Schumann and Clara, who is Schumann's wife, came to meet in Düsseldorf, finally. The famous Robert Schumann was so surprised to see Brahms' great talent, so he wrote some uh, articles in his magazine, music magazine about introducing this young musician Brahms. So now the name of Brahms became famous in the whole Europe, thanks to Schumann's help. And in 1857, he officially first got some uh, title, actually job, in Detmold Palace as a pianist. Then from 1859 to 1862 fall, he could have a chance to conduct a choir and compose some choral works in his hometown Hamburg. The next year, 1863, Brahms was invited to Vienna Singaka Academy. Then he began his musical life in Vienna, Austria, from that time. Then the following 35 years, around that outskirt of Vienna, Actually, his apartment was right there. So right around, around his actually neighborhood, he could meet Johann Strauss Jr., the second, and other very famous musicians he could meet. And also he could compose lots of masterpieces. In 1865, February, Brahms composed the famous German Requiem for her mother's death and the same year he composed Cantata Rinaldo. In 1869 he composed Alto Rhapsody which is about his own love for Schumann's third daughter Yurie but he couldn't make the love come true anyway. And in 1871, he composed the Song of Triumph to celebrate the French victory against German poison. And he composed some more music a lot. Today, I'm going to tell you about uh, Brahms just till right now. Then, in, actually, today I played only side A. And in the side B, there are third and fourth movements. So, after I recording that on some other day, I can tell you some more about Brahms' life again. Thank you for listening my songs in my channel again. And as long as you like the songs in my channel, I'll do my best to keep recording for you. Thank you again and see you next time. Bye.